We are all battling an enemy, an enemy that cannot be seen, only felt. It seeks to hold us back from reaching our full potential. This enemy lives within us all, a voice of negativity, doubt, and excuses, a voice whose sole purpose is to stop us from becoming who we were born to be. This invisible enemy is called resistance, and we battle it every day. In this video, we will discover how to win the war against resistance. I first heard about resistance through reading The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and ever since, this book has definitely become one of my favorites. Before reading it, I didn't know what to call that negative inner voice. Most of the time, I would call it procrastination, but procrastination can apply to almost anything. Resistance, however, applies only to the important things, the really important things. You know those dreams you've always had? It could be anything, pursuing your passion, overcoming addiction, becoming the person you've always wanted to be. Resistance is what keeps you from accomplishing those dreams. Of course, we never tell ourselves, I'm never going to live out my dreams. Instead, we say, I will live out my dreams. I'm just going to start tomorrow. Resistance loves this kind of talk. The problem is, as Pressfield puts it, we don't just put off our lives today, we put them off till our deathbed. This is why resistance is so dangerous. It convinces us to put off the important things, telling us, it's okay, don't worry, you'll get to it soon enough. But once we start telling ourselves, I'll go to the gym once the weather clears up, or I'll start eating healthy next week, that's when we know resistance has us in its tight grip. And once we start listening to this evil voice, it becomes so hard to stop. Resistance, Pressfield describes, is the force that pulls us towards instant gratification and away from long-term growth, health, and integrity. He's right to say that resistance, by definition, is self-sabotage. When I first read this book, the concept of resistance resonated with me so much. It felt like Pressfield knew exactly how to describe the emotions that I was feeling. He put a name to the enemy that I've been struggling with for as long as I could remember. I always used to give in to resistance. When it told me I may as well eat the whole pizza, I did. When it told me to have another drink, I drank. When it told me that I should just give up trying to quit smoking, I gave up. And when it told me I didn't have what it takes, I agreed. For most of my life, this inner voice, this invisible enemy, would win almost every battle. As Pressfield says, you think resistance isn't real? Resistance will bury you. And it was so easy to think that I was the only one, that there was something wrong with me, that it was just me who was easily distracted, prone to addiction, and had difficulty maintaining healthy habits. I would look around and see others as Superman with amazing focus, discipline, and ability to accomplish their goals. But the reality is everyone who is human experiences resistance. Nobody is immune, and resistance never stops fighting. But despite all the agony that it causes us, resistance can actually be really helpful. One of the most powerful concepts that I got from this book was the idea to use resistance as a guide. Pressfield explains that resistance will unfailingly point to true north, meaning that calling or action that it most wants to stop us from doing. We can use this. We can use it as a compass. We can navigate by resistance, letting it guide us to that calling or action that we must follow before all others. This is super helpful because it means that resistance provides us with direction, but it doesn't mean that direction all of a sudden becomes easy. So how do we actually start pursuing our passion, working towards our dreams, or becoming the person we've always wanted to be when resistance is doing everything in its power to stop us. How do we win the war against resistance? The answer is turning pro. The second part of this book is about turning pro or becoming a professional. And Pressfield doesn't mean someone that wears a suit and tie and goes to work in a fancy office. He means the professional as an ideal in contrast to the amateur. Pressfield explains that most of us are already pros, albeit in one area, our day jobs. He lists 10 different qualities or characteristics that makes us professionals at our jobs, such as showing up on time and staying on the job all day. 
He explains that when we are amateurs at something, such as an aspiring writer, we don't do the things or have the qualities that would make us a professional. We don't show up every day, we don't stay on the job from 9 to 5, hell, sometimes we don't do anything at all. One of the biggest weaknesses that he points out about amateurs is that they over-identify with their art, and tying their personal identity together with their work causes them to become terrified of its failure. Resistance loves this, because an amateur filled with fear never gets anything done. If we truly want to become the person we were born to be, we cannot stay an amateur. We have to do the work. We have to turn pro. Now, this book is written from the perspective of a writer, but the concepts within it can apply to almost any calling, passion, or dream, whatever it is that resistance is trying so desperately to stop you from doing. For me, I wasn't trying to pursue a passion or a calling as much as I was just trying to get healthy. A few years ago, my life was a mess. I drank, I smoked, I ate fast food and pizza almost every day, I rarely exercised, and I slept either way too much or way too little. I was a complete amateur when it came to taking care of my health. I would almost always listen to that inner voice of resistance encouraging me to indulge in instant gratification. It was determined to prevent me from living a healthy lifestyle. But deep down, I knew that I wanted to make my health a top priority. I had this powerful vision of the man that I wanted to be, and the compass of resistance was pointing me in the direction of health. So I set out to turn pro, to overcome my addictions and prioritize my health. It felt like the hardest possible thing to do at the time, but that's exactly how I knew I needed to do it. Prioritizing health requires constant upkeep and discipline, and it's definitely not easy. But fortunately, I was able to turn pro. It's taken me years to get to where I am today, but I now eat healthy and sleep great. I quit both drinking and smoking, and I exercise often. I've never felt better, and I plan on maintaining these healthy habits for the rest of my life. But that doesn't mean that I'm perfect, and I never skip a day of exercise or have a bad sleep. Turning pro doesn't mean you have to win every battle against resistance. It just means you have to win most battles most of the time. And if you can do that, you will win the war against resistance. Pressfield explains that there may be multiple times in our lives when we turn pro. What we feel the greatest resistance towards can change with time. For me, my greatest resistance no longer has to do with my health. These days, I struggle with a whole new kind of resistance. The resistance to create. And creation is exactly what the final part of this book is about. In this section, Pressfield introduces the concept of the ego and the self. The ego is responsible for producing resistance, while the self is our deepest being, our true identity, and is responsible for producing creative ideas and long-term growth. As Pressfield puts it, the self wishes to create, to evolve. The ego likes things just the way they are. The ego and the self are constantly at odds with one another. This is the war of art. The ego has resistance, and the self has an unseen magical mistress called the muse. Seriously, this is where the book gets a little otherworldly, so bear with me. Pressfield believes that creativity stems from this concept of the muse, a magical angel that visits us when we do our work and delivers creative ideas into our brains. And although I'm not convinced that's how creativity works, I must admit that when I was making this video, it did feel like there was a little voice whispering creative ideas into my ear. Besides, the concept of the muse is fun and does make for one of my favorite quotes. The professional will not tolerate disorder. He eliminates chaos from his world in order to banish it from his mind. He wants the carpet vacuumed and the threshold swept so the muse may enter and not soil her gown. I just love how beautifully this quote highlights the importance of order when it comes to creativity. And I think that's why I had such trouble creating in the past. I wanted to be creative, but my life was in such disorder, such chaos, 
that I just couldn't seem to get past resistance, let alone focus on creating. The muse didn't want to hang out with me while I was getting high and eating pizza, and my ego was determined to keep it that way. But that feeling I had deep down to get healthy and evolve into someone greater, that was my true self. My true self knew that before I could create, I first needed to clear the chaos. Turning pro when it came to my health was about setting myself and my surroundings in order, providing the foundation on which I could be creative. I didn't know this at the time, but looking back, it's so clear. I was setting the stage to be able to dance with the muse. I actually reread this book while making this video, and I relate more to Pressfield now than ever before. Because this book is written mainly for those looking to create. Whether you're an artist, a movie maker, a writer, or anyone on a creative journey. For me, my creative pursuit involves making inspiring, helpful videos for this YouTube channel. I want to continue to get better at storytelling and filmmaking so that these videos can have a significant impact on people and truly help them to live better lives. And while it's easy to say that, it's definitely not easy to do it. I experience a ton of resistance when it comes to creating these videos, but that's how I know it's exactly what I need to do. Now, it's just about staying disciplined with my health, turning pro when it comes to making these videos, and dancing with the muse. And I would love it if you subscribed and followed along. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week. Peace. Thank you.